stay up on my grind. That's my way of life. I got tunnel vision. I'ma chase that ray of light. Grendel is routinely in people's bottom five lists, ranked as one of the few C-tier Warframes on Overframe.com, and had a play rate of 0.78% in the latest official statistics. So it might come as a surprise to you that Grendel is an almost game-breakingly powerful Warframe. His feast ability has infinitely scaling damage and lets him kill enemies all the way up to the level cap. He's got built-in shield gating along with very tanky armor and health, and he can provide solid buffs for the entire team in the form of extra toxin damage and energy generation. His drawbacks are his draining energy economy, which got fixed with his fantastic Gourmand Augment mod, that his abilities don't work unless he has enemies in his belly, and that his rollerball ability is weak and unwieldy, hard to pilot and feels bad to use. It's more of a gimmick than an ultimate ability, and you're better off without it. But despite his flaws, make no mistake about Grendel's power and durability. Both Scott and Pablo from the dev team have gone on record saying that they have to be extremely careful when tweaking Grendel, because he's actually already close to being overpowered. Despite this, Pablo has said that he has plans to buff Grendel even further, so despite the fact that he's an already underrated Warframe, he's about to become even stronger than he already is. Nyx is another Warframe that gets the C tier rank on Overframe.com, and like Grendel had a dismally low play rate of 0.92% in the latest official statistics. The difference between them is that while Grendel is hard to acquire, and most people haven't even played him, Nyx is very easy to farm for, and is one of the first Warframes new players get their hands on. And that's the problem. Nyx has an ability kit that's extremely well suited to take on very, very high levels of difficult content, but paradoxically doesn't really do anything useful in a low level environment. Her number 2 ability can strip enemies of all of their defenses with a snap of your fingers, turning Steel Path Grenier into wet tissue paper. And her number 4 ability literally makes you immortal so long as you have energy. If you have the Augment mod for it, you can even move around and fire your weapons while it's active, which turns it into an actual useful ability. If you're an intermediate player who can do normal star chart missions but struggles to clear Steel Path, try using Nyx with an Assimilate build and watch as it becomes easy mode with minimal investment. That's not a Warframe that belongs in the C tier. Caliban is another Warframe that typically gets ranked in most players' bottom 10, while also having a dismally low play rate. He's also locked behind a late game farm, playing Narmer bounties that only get unlocked once you've completed the new war, so most people never bother to see what he's like for themselves. A bigger issue with Caliban though is that most of the early build guides that came out for him showcase these weird negative efficiency builds designed for fighting against level cap enemies, and it's an atrociously unfun way of playing Caliban. I've put out my own build guide trying to show a different way of piloting this Warframe, building for maximum efficiency and treating him as a wild ability spammer. This is both more fun and also a more effective and fluid way of playing Caliban, and in my view this is how he was always meant to be played. Caliban, when built correctly, might be the best support frame in the game. He can stun lock entire rooms full of enemies, he can apply big damage debuffs, he spams constant decoys that attract enemy fire and also deal damage, he has permanent armor and shield stripping covering large areas, and his shield regeneration is more than capable of carrying him far into endurance runs even without accounting for his natural adaptation ability. All he's really missing is a good damaging ability, which you can give him through the helmet system since his number one ability is fairly useless and won't be missed if you replace it. For these reasons, Caliban is massively underrated and he should be nowhere near the bottom 10. Okay, you might think I'm crazy here, taking a consensus top 3 Warframe in the entire game and putting him on a- Wait, what? Top 15? 
top 15. Look, Revenant is on this list because while people know that Revenant is a good Warframe, people genuinely don't know just how good this guy actually is. His number one ability turns half the battlefield into mind-controlled slaves, making all of your enemies fight against each other. His number two ability makes him immortal. Yes, literally immortal. Nothing can harm or even affect him in any way while it's active. His number 3 ability lets you one-shot any normal enemy in the game all the way up to the level cap and also refills the charges on his 2. His number 4 ability is a serviceable room clearing nuke, excellent for speed farming low level content, like what more could you possibly ask for? He has one of the best crowd control abilities in the game, he has THE best defensive ability in the game, he has infinitely scaling damage. He has AoE nuke capability. Other Warframes look at Revenant and ask themselves how they could possibly compete. In my opinion, Saren and Octavia are the only Warframes that can conceivably even compare with Revenant when it comes to simply being the best at everything. Top 15, get the hell out of here. Revenant is top 3. And if people can't see that, then he is ludicrously underrated. And if you want to take him even further, go check out the build guy I personally originated, shameless self-promotion, where you replace his Dance Macabre with Nyx's Mind Control, letting you create an immortal Alpha Thrall that makes all of his other abilities even better. Just replace Rolling Guard with Thrall Pact. I don't know what I was thinking there. Without a doubt, Zephyr is the single most underrated Warframe in the entire game. Zephyr, like Wukong, used to be in a pretty bad state and simply wasn't very good. Zephyr, like Wukong, got a rework that made her a hundred times better than she used to be. Zephyr, unlike Wukong, didn't see any noticeable increase in either play rate or in people's opinions of her. It's honestly baffling. Zephyr is still ranked as one of the worst Warframes in the game, despite legitimately being one of the most overpowered. Let's check the boxes, shall we? With her number 3 ability active, she's basically unkillable, so long as she's airborne. So, we have a single defensive ability so strong that you don't need to put any health, shield, armor or other defensive mods on her. She has a passive that gives her an added 150% crit chance bonus to her weapons while she's airborne. Oh, and her number one ability lets her be airborne forever if you just hold cast. And then we have her tornadoes, the number four ability. They suck up enemies and more enemies can be pulled in with airburst, her grouping ability. While enemies are suspended in the air inside the tornado, any shot you fire into the tornado with your weapons will have its damage multiplied and then dealt to every single enemy trapped inside. The damage numbers get absolutely ludicrous here, especially if you use damage types that can spread and chain between enemies like gas or electric. And if you want to do something even crazier, check out my build guide for Sentient Wrath Zephyr that takes advantage of a really nasty ability combination. The Augment mod for Zephyr's Tornado makes the ability create 11 tornadoes instead of 3, but they no longer suck up enemies. Well, casting Caliban's Sentient Wrath ability causes all enemies to be lifted into the air, which overwrites the rule that they can't get sucked in. There. Uh, with enough ability range, you can now stunlock basically an entire map by yourself, just like Banshee did back in the day. Except, now you can also deal enough damage to kill enemies well into thousands of levels while holding them trapped. And you're immortal while doing it. Explain to me again why Zephyr is ranked in the bottom 5. It is completely baffling. Well. There you have it folks, the top 5 most underrated Warframes in the game. Uh, let me know in the comments which Warframe you think is underrated, and I will see you again tomorrow for something completely different.